All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rukhakodash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's hope for elect scattered abroad, teaching his word of sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, here's a video I came across. Um, someone sent me, and they said it was going live. We had a lot of comments, and um, I was trying to ask this person, where was it at? You know, where where is this... Uh, you know, looting of Walmart taking place. And you can see that it's somewhere in a Latin country. Could be Puerto Rico, could be Venezuela, you know, anywhere where Northern is at. And um, you see troops in there. Well, the, I don't know if that's their, I'm pretty sure that's their National Guards. And um, they just allowing them to do it because there's nothing they can do. But, you know, showing this video is just you know, showing the times in which we're living in and what is going to get up is going to amp up to be, you know, there's a, a lot of things taking place, you know, as far as prophecy, you know, in the world, according to the scriptures, it has, let me say, has happened before it came to America. All right. You know, and uh, America is basically catching up, you know, uh, trying to catch up to speed to this new way of living eventually because right now here in america which is known as babylon the great great confusion and that's definitely what it is you know they talking about um a, uh, what they call it um an economy crash but a controlled economy crash all right they looking uh to basically stop the dollar you know due to this coronavirus and and use digital currency bringing forth a new way of buying and selling and we all know what that is that is the mark of the beast eventually uh it's going to come a point where um you're going to either have to take this chip you know in your body in your hand forehead whatever it may be place that all right in order for you to cope with society and to live your life but us of the hopeful elect you know that know the scriptures and the word of the lord the lord told us of these things all right and we know also that the Lord is just basically putting Esau in the trick bag. All right. I can go to Revelation, uh, Romans 9 and uh, how the Lord is uh, building these Edomites up. Matter of fact, I'm going to do that. Um, just go real quick. This is Romans 9. And um, I start at, uh, and I'm going to read, trying to read straight through. I wanted to make this quick. This is Romans 9 and 8. It says, that is, that which are children of the flesh, these are not the children of the Most High, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Because, you know, understanding the scriptures, you know that the Lord chosen people come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? With a particular certain line, seed. All right? And that is of the promise, the Israelites. It wasn't from Ishmael and to any other uh, 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 figure. All right. The Lord specifically chose Isaac. All right. And then from Isaac, Abraham, well, excuse me, Abraham, Isaac down to Jacob. All right. And Jacob had 12 sons, which became what? The 12 tribes of Israel, which took on the blessing, the seed, the promise. So it says, uh, verse nine, for this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebecca also hath conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. All right. Now, verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. You see? So it wasn't of Jacob and Esau and what they done. It was really of the Heavenly Father who have chosen, uh, he have already predestinated and chosen who he chose and that was jacob so let me read that one more time it says for the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil all right that the purpose that's the key word purpose of god which is yahweh according to election another key word election chosen might stand not of works but of him that calleth all right so the most high have chosen so it says verse 12 it was said unto her the elder shall serve the younger all right because esau came out first which was twin brothers of jacob so esau eventually in the kingdom 
because Jacob got the birthright and he got the blessing. All right. That mean what? Esau is going to serve Jacob. Now, this is verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And this is a proven fact. This is why Esau is so goddamn wicked, man. The most high hated him, man. Going all the way back to the serpent in the garden. To Cain, all right, down to Esau. This is why these Edomites today, are, uh, they're in their, you know, last hoorah of pushing their agenda, which is called the New World Order. Or whatever name they like to put upon it. Basically, the force and to change this world into micro... To, to, to humans turn into uh, transhumans, man. All right? To be everyone to be microchip. So anyway, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he say to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. All right? So it's not of man's will, it's of the most high's will. All right? Esau... Is going to come down having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. But it's because the Heavenly Father is using Esau, okay, to do these things. All right. And we're going to read why. Why is the Lord going to allow Esau to bring forth Jacob's trouble? All right. I'm going to say for one, because our people has been ignorant, foolish, disobedient, hard-headed, stiff-necked, rebellious. You know, even at a time where the Lord said, seek ye the Lord while he may be found and his prophets go out bedtime, you still reject his word and his counsel. All right. The Lord, Yahweh, has a controversy with his people. But on the second, but on the other note, I should say the Lord is also going to redeem his election to save them, to deliver them, to bring forth a new world, which is this world, but a refreshed world. All right. Going into that word kinos means to be what refreshed a new earth. You know, a better one in righteousness. All right. And this is why Esau got to go down. But the Lord is using him. You know, it's also written that he is a he is a sword. The Most High uses Esau as a sword. So anyway, it says uh, verse 15. For he say unto Moses, I will have compassion. Excuse me. But he say unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, not of him that runneth. But of the Most High, Yahweh, that show of mercy. For the scriptures say, and, and you evil, you evil demons, all right, Esau, take note, take note, all right? Yeah, you're the mighty man of the earth, but guess what? The Lord says, so then it is not of him that willeth. It's not of you that you can do whatever you want, all right, to any and all everybody or anybody who you choose. It says, nor of him that runneth. But of Yahweh that show of mercy. All right. And that's why spiritual powers is coming to fight against the evil. All right. And that's to uplift and glorify Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So it says, verse 17 For the scriptures say unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So there's, there, there's the, the purpose. The Most High is using you Edomites just like he used Pharaoh when Moses was going back and forth telling Pharaoh to let his people go. And that was in old ancient Egypt when Israel was in captivity. Guess what? It's all repeated today. It's nothing new under the sun. Israel is in captivity again. Have not the prophets prophesied? All right. Let the Lord people go. But guess what? This time it's a little different. The Lord, the Lord is going to fight, all right, and show forth his power, okay, in his servants. He's going to show forth his power by the way of Esau's power being on high. The Most High is going to trump your power and show you that your power is truly his power. It says in that my name, and that key thing, key word there is name, that the Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai might be declared throughout all the earth. So this time... All right, the Lord's name is going to reign like it did in the past, but this time it's going to be forever and ever, even forever and ever. All right, never again will the Lord, you know, uh, you know, they'll feel like the Lord doesn't exist or, you know, we're just here by ourselves and, you know, technology is ruling the earth and things of that nature of witchcraft. 
All right. The most high is the ruler over witchcraft. He created it. It says, therefore, have he had mercy on whom I will have mercy and whom he will hearten. And whom he will, he hearteneth. Thou shalt say then unto me, why doest thou find fault for who have resisted his will? Exactly. And that's why everything that's being done now, you know, is being done by the Heavenly Father's will. All right. So now going back to uh, Jeremiah. Um, let's get back to Jeremiah. In which I had Jeremiah 30 and verse 6. Because we're in that time of Jacob's trouble. All right. Everywhere I'm driving, you know, I went early into the park to try to get a little little exercise in and um you know i see these big ass tents they got they got the park sold up you know big ass tents look like you know i want to i want to call them chicken centers man you know they got the propane tank um but you know someone told me basically when i was talking about it they said th those were um the vaccination um or to be tested if you have the coronavirus and that nature or whatever but to me, you know, in all reality, those are chimpanzee sinners, man. All right. So anyway, Jeremiah 30 and 6, it says, Ask ye now and see whether a man doeth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins? As a woman in travail and all faces are turned into paleness. All right. Because these are some troubled times. Matter of fact, some evil times. Okay. Meaning troubled times. All right, sooner or later, they're going to force you to take a chip, whether they do it by the way of mandating the vaccine. It could be that way, you know, according to the article of Bill Gates that I uh, did a lesson on yesterday, yesterday morning, you know, the vaccine could be a regular chemical injection, you know, but, you know, they're also, as we speak, they're breaking down the money, they're shutting down the Federal Reserve note as being money and they're going to show us a new way of how to pay and that's using what digital currency that's the way of the mark of the beast the rfid microchip all right so the coronavirus is playing hand in hand with the money all right with the microchip and uh, according to that article uh, about bill gates um is that when you receive this chip it will also let them know that you received the vaccine because a chip has, um, you know, it can carry a lot of information. It's supposed to be what your new ID is going hand in hand with ID 2020, ID, ID 2020. Okay. It's a new form of how you buy and sell. All right. It, it also have, will have your medical records on there, whether you are sick or whether you paid a visit, you know, this chip is game changing. And that's why the Lord said anyone that receive it, he's going to destroy them with fire. All right. So you go and take that chip. The scriptures say, he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that findeth his life shall lose it. Okay? Because if you think that you're going to, you know what? I'm going to take the chip. I don't want to die. You think that you found your per your life, the Lord's going to destroy you. But if you lose your life for your how about you, I was shy. You have truly found your life, man, being in this truth. All right? Because the elect don't die. All right? Anyway. Um, well, let me say none of us truly die, but the elect is going to be partaker of the first resurrection, man. Okay. So, uh, Jeremiah 30 and seven, it says at last for that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. All right. So we're approaching Jacob's trouble. We're in it. And it's just a matter of time to intensify and start getting more uh, worse out here. You know, more restrictions are coming every other day. The uh, mayor of New Jersey, uh, he said something around the lines. He don't like the way Jersey uh, brother sent the article through, through the chat and shit. And it says something around the lines. He don't like the fact that Jersey is uh, still gathering. He said there will be more restrictions. There will be more enforcements. There will be arrest because he don't like the fact that Jersey is, you know, Jersey people here in Jersey are still doing things, you know, I guess. You know, I ain't really read in depth of the article, but that was basically the uh, the main focal point. All right. That he's going to make sure there's more restrictions. So everything is getting worse, man. You know, and as you see on your screen to the left, which you should, I'm going to edit this. All right. And you should see that this loot in here, which I don't I don't know what country it is. But it's a Latin country, and they're in there looting in Walmart. All right, this just appeared today. 
I don't know if it's old or not, but either way, this is the spirit, okay? This is the fear and the looting and the sedition. It's, it's all coming, man. It's all here, okay? So, um, from here, let me read uh, 2nd Edges 15 and Baba Kushai. I'm going to try to brush, I'm going to just strive to brush through. Uh, and just t touch on some points here because we're truly living in this uh, this book, Second Edges 15, Second Edges 16. You know, um, we hey, this is it, man. Second Edges 15 and one. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. All right, so the Lord have prophets. He have men. He have he has a mouthpiece in the earth. Little do you two-thirds believe that, man. Out of all these years, starting with our apostles and elders, here at Great Millstone and their elders, okay, have been teaching on the street, prophesizing, telling you these things. These are men that were sent from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right? Those that are teaching 100% truth and teaching prophecy, man, all right? And you, it's important for you you know, to find out who those true men are. Because not all these men out here that teach are true men of the Lord. Some of them are wolves in sheep clothing. Okay. Some of them are Judas. All right. So it says, behold, speak thou in the ears of my people. Why I say my people? Because the Lord's people are the Israelites. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Seminole Indians. All right. You so-called Haitians, uh, West Indians. All right. You're all Israelites, man. If you, you're an Israelite from the seed of your father, not of what you look like. It's not about what you look like. It's about you being of the seed of your father that goes back to being an Israelite. Because there is uh, something we call speckled birds as written in the scriptures. Confusion of faces. Because Israelite are scattered, man. We look like everybody. So it says, which I will put in thy mouth, say of the Lord. So the Lord have truly put his word in the prophet's mouth. Now everything is actually happening, man. Right? Verse 2. And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. And that's what the brothers read. You know, a lot of people get emotional about what's being said out of a brother, a prophet's mouth. But instead, they don't realize that he's coming out of the, the book. The book is saying this. All right? It's the spirit. It's the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Verse 3. Fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee and that speak against thee. So the Lord told his men not to be afraid. You know, scriptures say those that stand stiffly for the name of the Lord, you know, all the way to the end, enduring. Not supposed to be afraid of what other people think or what they say. No, you're in the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. The Lord is going to protect us. And that's truly what it's going to come down to faith. Truly believing that the Lord is going to protect you. No guns, no stockpiling on foods, you know, no, uh, you going to the store trying to buy up all the medicine and herbs, whether which one you go for, you better off going for herbs, but still, it's, on, it's on, your only safety and refuge is of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and it's going to come down to that, man. It's doing, it's coming down to it now, as these laws are being put in place and these restrictions, you know, you should already start seeing you know, what route, what road you probably going to end up going down. And I'm going to say this, the elect, they already see it, okay? Because why? They counted the cost, you know? Counting the cost, man. All right, anyway, uh, verse 4, it says, For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. See? Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. And it says, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. Now, this coronavirus... You know, which is a real virus. I would say man-made. Anything that's man-made and it's been created is of the power of the Most High. The Most High uses the creatures as his will. Okay? And even though this virus is not as hyped up as they making it be, you know. But guess what? There is going to be more plagues. There's going to be more plagues than the coronavirus. You ain't even going to know the name of it. And you people are going to start dropping dead, man. All right? But you still got to count it as a plague. All right, a flu virus is a plague. All right, the AIDS virus is a plague. All right, you name it, man. 
It says, behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. And it's not just happening here in America. It's happening throughout the world. All right. And trust me, it's more. It says the sword, famine, death and destruction. And that's what's coming. They, those are plagues, man. The sword, you know, being shot outside by army troops. Famine, a lack of food and water, death, you know, dying, all right, people dying, and destruction, same as dying, man, being blasted away by a, a fighter jet, you know, it says, uh, verse 6, it says, for wickedness have ex exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled, through Esau, all this witchcraft, and all this wickedness have went rampant through the earth, man, and it said, it exceedingly polluted the whole earth all right and then what it says and their hurtful works are fulfilled going is reminding me of uh what's that uh revelations 18 revelation 18 let me see something real quick uh revelations 18 and it says um uh yeah start at four revelation 18 four and i heard another voice from heaven saying come up out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues all right now five this is the point for her sins have reached unto heaven and yahweh have remembered her iniquity all right so this place has truly irked the nerve of yahweh by shim yahweh shai man uh what's that um amos nine and eight he said i would destroy it this is the most sinful is Canaan. I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. All right. Another precept. Amos 9 and 8. Um, verse 7. It says, uh, Therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. So guess what? All these things are happening because the Lord is acting upon the wickedness, man. And it starts with the house of the Most High. Okay? Really, the house of the Most High are you Israelites. That's why Jacob's trouble. But guess what? You Edomites are not going unpunished, as the scriptures say. You are not going unpunished. Alright? You're going to drink of that cup. But it starts with the house of Israel. You know, and really getting down into it, you know, it's going to start with those that believe. You know, you guys out there that call yourself, you know, Israelites, you're proud, you know, you you, you flaunt it all over through Instagram and, and Facebook. And, you know, you can't wait to take a picture with your wife and y'all dressed up. You know, it's going to start with, with those who believe. Okay. You know, really getting into it. You say you believe. You call yourself an Israelite. Do you truly got faith? And Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, are you prepared and ready? Did you learn the scriptures? Did you eat with faith? Because the scriptures say, he that don't eat with faith is sin. All right? This thing is not a joke. It's not a fab. It's not a, a fashion show, man. It's not, a, it's not just cool, you know, be down with. Because persecution is coming. And that's who the Lord is going to truly see who's with him. By purifying them through a persecution, man. By trying them through the fire, as the scriptures say. So anyway, it says, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. And profane means what? Outside the temple. Meaning, you know, everything you do is outside. It's wicked, man. You know, the Most High don't take delight in it at all. It's always profane. It says, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. So not only... You do wickedness, you exercise yourself in it. You, you you practice to make perfect, to be wicked. You know, that's why Jake is that rap music. That's why I got to talk about that rap music. That rap music is wicked, man. It's not the words that are wicked, but the actions and the way that you manage yourself, how you conduct yourself. You know, and then words do play a factor because you speak life into existence, man. You know, you can speak up your own death or you can, you know, you can speak of yourself living, man. You know, do your how about Shimmy How Shot. All right. So they wickedly exercise themselves. They wickedly exercise themselves, man. Homosexuality. Okay. 
you name it, man. It says, uh, Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cried unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. And guess what? The men of the Lord that out, you know, uh, speaking his word in season, out of season, you know, on the streets, prophesizing. The scriptures say uh, they cry out for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So the righteous are crying unto the Lord, asking for recompense, asking for refuge and to be saved, you know, asking to be delivered, you know, from this hell, this hell hole. All right. Governed by Esau, Edom. All right. By the powers that be. Which is Edom. It says the souls of the just complain continually. So there's a non-stop cry. All right. Did not the Lord uh, speak the parable in Luke at the 18th chapter? Matter of fact, I'm going to get it real quick. The Lord said this about crying. Um, the, you know, crying, crying so much. All right. And we, and we, you know, which I hope to be a part of the elect. We cry day and night, man. That's why these shows are put up, videos are put up, even when, you know, you're not even, you know, you think it's not seasonal for what we're talking about. You think it's not uh, beneficial to you. Oh, I don't want to hear that right now, man. I'm trying to hear about this basketball game. LeBron dropped 20, 35 yesterday, you know. Meanwhile, you should have been taking heed. Now, all of a sudden, now you, Jake want to get up in the watch and claim they believe, which is good, which is good to cleave unto the Lord. But guess what? The Lord said, make no tarrying, man. You know, I guarantee you, if, if, if the Lord let this thing die down and, and hush Esau up for a minute again, you know, those that claim they, they believe now are going to go right back in their bullshit again, man. But may the Lord don't do that. You know, may the Lord speed up this time. So anyway, I want to read this. This is Luke chapter 18 and 1. It says, and he spake the parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So it's important for us to pray always, man. Every day, anytime you get the thought, drop whatever you're doing and start praying. Don't push it off to the side. Don't say, oh, when I get out of this job or when I go on my lunch break or, you know, uh, you know, when I get in the car. Nah, man, you, you could be shopping and shop right and the spirit come upon you to to pray. Shit. You can always pray in your head. You put the food down and just look forward and pray. Nobody got to know that you're praying. You know, that's a good way of constantly staying in the spirit and praying to the Lord, man. You know, because Satan, you know, he's your adversary. You know, he comes like a roaring lion. He's trying to confuse you or try to, you know, uh, uh, hem you up. You know, make to the point where you forget, you know, that you should have prayed. So you don't want to even be in that type of, that pattern, man. You want to make a, a, a better a, a better pattern and, and right and good things and righteous things. It says, saying, there was a city of judge which feared not the Most High, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in the city, well, in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not the Most High, neither regard man, yet because this widow trouble with me, I will avenge her, lest by her continued coming she weary me. So what are the men of the Lord doing? To the Lord, we're wearying him, man. Well, I can't say we're wearying the Heavenly Father. All right. But we're constantly beating on the Lord's ear. Uh, the scriptures say, give the Lord no rest until he established the kingdom. And that's exactly what's going down. That's what happened throughout all these years that you you didn't two thirds couldn't see it. Now, all of a sudden, trouble is coming, man. All right. Force of the chip is coming, man. World War Three is coming, man. Sedition among men is coming. All right. Uh, uh. As is written in Second Edges, uh, one shall go into the city and shall not be able. Try to go into the scene, can't. Hey, all this is coming. All right. Seek ye, uh, seek ye. Uh, excuse me. How I go? I just say, um, it's like I said it already. It is what it is. Verse five. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her. Least by her continued coming, she weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge say, and shall not the most high avenge his own elect? Exactly. So this, if this is an unjudge that's, you know, weary, tired of this same woman crying all the time, how much more the heavenly father? Eventually, the most high is making this move. He's putting it into Esau's kingdom. 
And the way that Esau's kingdom going out, it's not what you might think if you don't understand the scriptures. Because people, the uh, men, women of this world, you have your own uh, uh, way. And you don't know the way of the Lord. In your eyes, you thinking that this can't happen. But in the Most High's eyes, it's happening right before your eyes, man. All right. The Lord set this thing up beautifully for himself. Okay. And for his people and for his chosen. That's why it's happening the way it's happening. Esau, you're in the trick bag. You're bringing down your own kingdom. It says, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her at least by her continued coming. She wearied me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge say. And shall not the most high avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. All right. And the only ones that's going to truly have faith is the elect. Because the majority of our people, the two thirds, they don't know the Lord. You, you still praying into Jesus Christ. It's 2020 and we're in a form of martial law and you still talking about Jesus Christ. It's crazy. Anyway. This is 2nd Edges chapter 9. I'm going to just read a few more verses and I'll end it. <clears throat> and therefore saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. So the Lord is going to avenge us. You know, he's the real avenger. You know, we're, we're, we, we can't avenge. We don't have power. All right. The Lord is going to avenge for us and then turn us into a, a less of a less of power than what he is. We're, gonna, we're about to become a power in this earth, meaning what? A God, Allah, okay? Not Allah who the, who the Muslims pray into. We're talking about Allah, which the Hebrew word means power. We're about to become a lesser power in the earth, a lesser power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Meaning we're going to be gods over you other nations, man. And this is happening, all right? Verse 10, behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. So Esau, this is why, see, this Egypt is talking about America, not modern day Egypt, man. I mean, excuse me, not the ancient day of Egypt, but the modern day of Egypt, the bondage in which the Israelites are in. The way that our people are dumbed down today, the way that they are, uh, what's that word? Um, they, are, they are substitute, uh, no. I can't think of the word. I just had it. The way that our people are dumbed down and they are uh, subjected to the folly. Because scriptures say folly is set in great dignity. The music don't wax low. There is no more mori no morality of righteousness in our people. They, 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 it's all wickedness, witchcraft, uh, homosexuality, un all unlawful sex. That the Lord said, look, his people are headed... As, as he said, his people, my people are led as a flock to the slaughter. Meaning, while you're going to be taken out, Esau is going to steal his birthright from the Lord's people. And the Heavenly Father did not, did not set that up that way. He did not set up Esau to have the birthright. And we read that in Romans, the ninth chapter, that it wasn't of them that willeth, it was of the Most High. Okay? So Esau, you can't steal back what you sold. It was already ordained by the Heavenly Father. Life went on. Esau became a man. Jacob became a man. They had a wife. They had wives. And they had children. They birthed a nation. You can't steal it back. It was written. It's done. Anyway. It says, uh, Behold, my people was led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. And smite Egypt with plagues as before, uh-oh, and will destroy all the land thereof. So there you go, you see? That's how you know it's not talking about ancient Egypt. It says, um, but I will bring them with the mighty hand with and a stretched out arm, all right, which is the Lord is going to bring those chariots, man. He's going to bring his angels. He's he letting Yahweh Shai loose to come back and, re and redeem, to recover, all right, the elect. It says, and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. 
and will destroy all the land thereof because all of this place of North America is ultimately going to be destroyed. This is the lake of fire. All right. This will be the lake of fire after the thermonuclear destruction. All right. It says Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plagues and punishment of that Yahweh shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn for their seed shall fell through the blasting in hell and with a fearful constellation. Woe to the world and to them that dwell therein for the sword and their destruction draw nigh and one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes and their course and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword, and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Alright, so, you know, I'm going to leave it as that. I uh, hope this lesson was edifying to those of the whole four elect. And uh, like I said, I'm going to edit this uh, video to have um, this little looting going on and somewhere in Latin, in a Latin country where the Israelites at, the Northern Kingdom. And, uh, you know, that's it, man. So I hope this was edifying to the elect. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakhak Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's elect. Shalom.